So WWDC was yesterday, and I've already downloaded the developer betas to all of my devices and started playing around with the new software. In this video, I'm going to give you a preview of the 10 things that have impressed me most about iOS 26 so far. Now, just a quick word of warning, I'm using the developer beta here, which is designed specifically for people who need an early preview of the software, and I would not recommend downloading it to your primary device. They tend to be very buggy. Keep in mind, when you go to your iPhone and can't find any of the things that we're looking at today, this is just a preview of what's coming later in the year. Okay, let's get into it. I can't really talk about iOS 26 without covering the complete visual overhaul that Apple has given the operating system something they're calling liquid glass. This is essentially a full design refresh for iOS, and it's something that you'll see mirrored across the entire Apple ecosystem. So whether you're on a Mac, an iPad, an Apple Watch, Apple TV, or even Vision Pro, you'll see a consistent design language. A lot of the visual cues have clearly come from Vision OS. At first glance, I don't think it looks massively different. And no, we haven't got the circular icons that some people thought we might get, but what we do have is a much glossier, glassier look to everything. All the app icons have had a redesign, and if you long press on any of them, the contextual menus now look completely different as well. This new design language carries through into most of the core apps too. One thing I did notice, especially in light mode, is that search bars and certain elements, like those now anchored to the bottom of the screen, don't always stand out very clearly against the background. The liquid glass style does look nice, but it can sometimes make key elements a little bit hard to see, although I did notice an accessibility feature that lets you fix this. But overall, this is a much needed refresh to what had become a bit of a stale interface. It looks modern and cohesive, but importantly, it doesn't seem like you're gonna need to completely relearn how to use your iPhone. If you're comfortable with iOS 18, I think you'll feel right at home in iOS 26, and that's a good thing. A new addition to iOS 26 that I think is genuinely going to have a daily positive impact on my life is visual intelligence for whatever you can see on your iPhone screen. The problem with visual intelligence in iOS 18 was that it was limited to whatever your camera could see. So in other words, you could only really use it on photos that you took when you were out and about. There was a workaround using the Google app, but now in iOS 26, the functionality is baked right into the iPhone. Now, because this is an Apple intelligence feature, you do need a device that is compatible with Apple intelligence. But here's how it works. Let's say that you're on Instagram and you see an image of a product that you want to know more about. All you need to do is take a screenshot in the usual way. When the screenshot appears, your markup and sharing options will be at the top of the screen. And down at the bottom, you'll see two new buttons. Ask on the bottom left and image search on the bottom right. Ask lets you use ChatGPT to ask questions about whatever is showing on the screen. Image search allows you to run a reverse image search. And the really clever bit is that you can scrub over the part of the image that you want to focus on. So if you see a shirt someone's wearing, for example, you can just scribble over that part of the image and trigger a reverse image search to find something similar online. It is classic Apple. It's not technically outstanding. It's just been designed really well. It is basically just combining chat GPT with reverse image search, the fact that this now works for anything that is visible on your screen makes the feature so much more useful than it used to be. By the way, if you enjoy iPhone tips and tricks videos, you should definitely check out my dedicated training product, iPhone Essentials Plus. It's over 150 lessons covering every aspect of your iPhone, with more content being added all the time. Every lesson includes a short video, a step-by-step -step guide with screenshots, and a downloadable PDF. So no matter how you learn, you're covered. The portal has been designed around iOS 18, but I'm already in the process of updating everything for iOS 26 later this year. There's no ads, no sponsors, just content, and it's all available for a single price with no recurring subscription. If you're interested, scan the QR code on screen or follow the link in the description or the pinned comment. Do you remember how last year with iOS 18, Apple completely redesigned the Photos app and pretty much everybody said that they hated it and wish that Apple would take it back to the previous version. Well, in iOS 26, Apple hasn't taken it back to the previous version, but they have redesigned their redesign. And if that sounds confusing, it's because it is. But what I do think this year is that Apple has fixed a number of the major criticisms that people had with the iOS 18 redesign. So now when you open the Photos app, the confusing two-thirds, one-third split between your photo library and your collections is completely gone. Instead, when you open the app, 
your library fills the entire screen with a search button in the bottom right corner where you'd expect it to be instead of it being hidden away in the photos themselves. If you want to get to your collections, there's now a collections button in the bottom left corner. And when you tap it, the collections page looks pretty much the same as it did before. Interestingly though, and I'm not sure whether this is a bug or a feature, the customize option is gone. And that's something that I was promoting as a really useful feature of iOS 18. Now, when you scroll to the bottom of the collections view, the only option that you have is to reorder. So you can still move things around, putting the stuff you don't care about at the bottom and the useful bits at the top but you can't hide or remove any sections like you could before. I wonder if Apple realized people were removing a lot of what they felt were core photos elements. Back in the main library view, the select button is now much clearer, appearing as an actual button in the top right. And the filter button still gives you all the same options that you had before, which is good. I think people are going to be pleased with this. It isn't the photos app from before, but in my opinion, it's all the good features of the iOS 18 redesign combined with a navigation style that people will hopefully get on board with this time around. Another Apple intelligence feature that's been added to iOS 26, which may not sound all that exciting, but is definitely going to be really useful, is the ability to create a calendar event directly from an image using visual intelligence. Essentially, you can just point your phone at something like a dentist appointment card or a poster on the wall, and your phone will scan the image. If it recognizes that the information could be used to create a calendar event, you'll see an add to calendar button appear. Tap this and your phone will take an image and then show a preview of the calendar event it wants to create. You can hit edit if you want to check or change any of the details or just tap create event to add it straight away. In my early testing, this has worked really well, even picking up addresses and other useful information. It's definitely the kind of thing that I'll be using often because I'm someone who prefers to get a written appointment card but I nearly always forget to actually add it to my calendar later on. If you're enjoying the content here, why not sign up for my weekly newsletter, which is all about tech news and tips delivered free to your inbox each Friday. Sign up via the QR code on screen or the link in the description. On the iPhone 16 that I've installed the developer beta of iOS 26 on, there is a brand new option in the battery settings called Power Mode. When you tap into it, there's a feature in here called Adaptive Power. And according to the description, this setting allows your iPhone to make subtle performance tweaks when your battery usage is higher than usual. That could include things like slightly lowering the display brightness or allowing certain background tasks to take a bit longer, all with the aim of squeezing more life out of your battery. This, I think, is the AI-powered battery management feature that was rumored before iOS 26 was announced. And I think it's going to play a really important role when the iPhone 17 Air launches in September, especially if that model ends up being thinner than previous versions and potentially limited in battery capacity as a result. By default, this feature is switched off, but you can opt in and enable it manually. I don't know yet which other iPhone models this will be available on, but I can confirm that it's showing and working on my iPhone 16 running the iOS 26 developer beta. The Messages app in iOS 26 has had a visual upgrade with the addition of message backgrounds. To try this out, just head into a specific chat tap the person's name at the top of the screen and look for the new backgrounds option. From here, you can stick with none if you want to keep things as they are or choose from a range of preset styles like color, sky, water or aurora. If you scroll down a bit, you'll also find suggestions and if your device supports Apple intelligence, there's a playground section too. This lets you use image playground to generate something completely custom for that particular chat. Once you've picked a background you like, it will be applied to that specific conversation which also gives you a quick visual cue to differentiate between different chats. But even if you're just using it for aesthetics, it's a nice way to give the Messages app a little bit of personality. The podcast app in iOS 26 now gives you much more control over your playback speed and sound quality. When you're listening to a podcast, you'll see a speed button to the left of the rewind 15 seconds button. Tap on this and you can now choose from more granular speed options. That includes slightly slower playback at 0.8 speed, or faster options like 1.3, 1.5, 1.8, and two times speed. You can even swipe along the scale to go as slow as half speed or as fast as three times. So you can fine tune it to exactly how you like to listen. Just above that is the new enhanced dialogue button. Tapping this boosts voice clarity in the podcast that you're listening to, making dialogue stand out more clearly, which is perfect if you're speeding things up 
but you still want to catch every word. One of my favorite new additions in iOS 26 is a feature in Apple Music called AutoMix. If you're already an Apple Music subscriber, this is one of those updates that genuinely changes how you experience your playlists. So here's how it works. When you're in a playlist, you'll now see an auto mix button at the top of the screen. Turn that on and your iPhone will use artificial intelligence to automatically blend the end of one track into the start of the next, just like a DJ. It can slow down or speed up the tempo of songs, match beats between tracks and create smooth transitions between them. So far, I've been really impressed with this. And if I were a Spotify user, this is the kind of feature that might make me think about switching. One small but very welcome change that I noticed in the Maps app is the ability to share guides with other people. This is something that users have been requesting for ages now, myself included. The one thing I'd really love to see is proper collaboration so that multiple people could contribute to a single guide. That isn't available just yet, but the fact that we can now share them is definitely a step in the right direction. If you haven't used guides before, they are essentially collections of locations that you can save inside the Maps app. So if you're planning a trip to a city, you might create a guide of all the restaurants and sites that you want to visit, or maybe you've curated a list of the best local walks or pubs in your area. Up until now, guides were only visible to you. They weren't something that you could share. But now if you tap into a guide, there is a share icon in the top left corner. Tap this and you can share your guide with anyone using the usual methods like messages, mail or airdrop. A small but very useful feature added in iOS 26 is the ability to create a new reminder using the action button. I honestly thought this was already possible in a previous version, but apparently not. So if you've got an iPhone 15 Pro or any of the iPhone 16 models, you can now assign the action button to open straight into a new reminder. This is perfect for those moments when you want to jot something down quickly without opening the app or using Siri. To set this up, just go into settings, choose action button, then scroll across to controls. Tap into the choose a control option, scroll down and select reminders, then choose new reminder. And if you don't have a phone with an action button, don't worry, you can still add this same functionality to your control center. That way you're just a swipe away from creating a new reminder whenever you need to. So those are the 10 features of iOS 26 that have impressed me the most so far. I'll be diving into the rest of the operating system over the next few weeks, and getting plenty of content ready for when it officially launches in September. What about you? Have you tried out the developer beta yet? And if not, what are you most looking forward to based on what you've seen so far? Let me know in the comments. And as ever, if you found this video useful, consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.